What's up guys, Moki here from Fractured Gaming. Today I'm going to talk about some of the essentials and things you can use for coding, especially in Arma. Um, you can use this for various different languages, um, C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Python, and the list just goes on forever. Um, so the first application I'll talk about is Notepad++. So for years I have coded with Notepad++. Uh, from Arma to World of Tanks plugins to, well, anything really, um, I've used this. The only thing I don't use in this is C Sharp because I use Visual Studio for C Sharp. Um, this is the plain Jane rudimentary text editor that everyone has been using for many years. Um, it's great. I love it. Um, I highly recommend to use it. Um, however, recently I've been turned over to a new application called... Atom. Atom is a Java based text editor. Um, they say it's uh, it's hackable to the core, meaning you can customize it in any way, shape or form. So if you don't want to use Notepad++, which is something that you're probably used to, and you want to go to something newer, a little more cleaner, um, you can go to Atom, which looks a lot better in my opinion. So Atom to me is probably one of the better ones. Um, so those are the two text editors that I recommend. One or the other. You don't need to use. You don't need to download both. Just use one. Um, I personally need to use Atom. So in this video, I'm not going to show you anything with Notepad++ because I just don't use it. Um, I may do something later for it, but I don't really see a reason for it. Atom just seems to blow it out of the water. Um, the next thing you're going to need is a GitHub account. You will notice in Arma, there's a lot of people who code, especially Aether Wasteland, and then they put their stuff on the repositories um, for the public to see, or they pay the $7 a month for the private uh, profile to ensure that their repositories are private so nobody can see them except yourself. I still don't recommend putting credentials on anything um, inside of your file structure that you don't want anybody else to see, even if it is private or not, because you never know somebody may get your account, may get your credentials and your server has been compromised or whatever the case may be. So, um, GitHub is great. The reason why GitHub's great is because you can actually see what's going on on everything. So in this case, we'll look at fractured gaming, um, fractured gaming. I can see that everything that has been done merging, um, branches from agent rev that he's done. I can see the code that's been changed. Um, if I ever had any questions about code on anything, like for instance, the store config for Arma, if I wanna know what the prices are at, I could see what it is. Um, so what this is, is it's you essentially make a repository for short a repo and you upload your file structure to it and it becomes on the web as a backup. It's great to have. Uh, in some cases where a lot of you spam control Z until control Z doesn't work anymore than you alt F4 because you just lost three hours worth of work that you messed up on, um, GitHub is your savior. The other application is GitHub Desktop. <clears throat> this is something that you will want to use a lot. Um, this helps in correlation with the website. You change something locally, you make the change, and then you push it over to your web repo um, and you can see everything that's happened on it. So this is also something that's very nice to have. So those are the applications that I recommend. You can get Notepad++ from notepad-plus-plus.org or you can get Atom.io from Atom.io um, and that's pretty much that. GitHub is on github.com the desktop app is desktop.github.com. So those are what I recommend downloading to start your your adventure in coding. It's not really an adventure. It's actually very troublesome, and uh, you may want to put a rubber duck on your desk also. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing you'll need for programming. Get a stuffed animal. Get a rubber ducky. It's called The, the method's called a rubber ducky method. So what it is, is you put a an object on your desk that you talk to. <laughs> you may think I'm silly, but I'm not. Uh, ask any programmer out there, rubber decking method is a real thing. Um, you set it on your desk, you talk to it. If you have a problem, you, you go through your problem with the rubber ducky. 
when you're done talking to the rubber ducky, it may come to you what your problem is or an alternative method to reach your goal. Rubber ducky methods are a thing and use them. It also stops you from spamming forums, screaming at people, getting mad, beating your face off the desk. Well, it doesn't stop that. Um, so use a rubber ducky. So in, in this, we're going to talk about um, simply just Adam. So one of the things you're going to want to do when you get to Adam, the very first thing, there's going to be a little line in the middle of your screen. I don't have it because I've taken them off. I've customized my theme, and we're just going to talk about that line. The line that's vertical, straight through your Atom editor, is a soft wrap indicator. This means that if, you're, if your code extends past that line, it's saying you may want to break it to another line. The reason being is so that way it's your code's more legible, cleaner, and there may be other various reasons why it's there. But if you really want wrapping, you can enable real wrapping through your settings. Here. And then here. And then you can just go down to wrapping, 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 wrapping. That's not where it's at at all. Dooby dooby doop doop dooby doo dooby doop dooby doo. I think I may have turned disabled mine actually. Oh, here it is, soft wrap. So you turn on soft wrap, and it's exactly what it does. It wraps. Um, you can also do at the preferred line length. So wherever your line length is, you can set the wrap. I don't use this personally because I have my own formatting style. So it's up clearly up to you. The next thing that I want to talk about is the add-ons for this. So this is an add-on on the right-hand side. This is called Minimap. This allows me to drag my, down to my code anywhere I want to go in the highlighted section, and I can see exactly what's going on, where it's at. So ooh, what, is this commented, what is this giant uh, commented thing out? Bam, I know what it is. It's right here. See how there's another one up here? I can just drag it to it, and I see it's right here. So it kind of helps um, in terms of location, where you're at. The next one that I want to talk about also is um, icons. So let's go ahead and get those two set up. So you go to setting, settings, you go to install, and then the first one we said was Minimap. So here it is, I already have mine installed. You click this and you click the install button and then it's there. Um, and then icons, file icons is what I use. Then you just go install that one. Once it's done installing, that's pretty much it. Um, you can also do themes. I use Atom Material UI, and then I also download Atom Material Syntax to get my theme to look this way. Um, so that'll get you started with your themes. If you like dark themes, you can use light themes too, even if you want to. Um, but that's really it. So let's go ahead and say that I want to start coding now. I've downloaded Agent Rev's core A3 WSN file, and now I want to see what to do. Most people, as soon as they get a server up and running to ensure everything's working, the first thing that most server owners do is they go straight to the store file to change prices. So let's go ahead and do that. Hopefully Shine doesn't beat the crap out of me for changing his prices, but meh, whatever. The first thing I'm going to do is go to GitHub Desktop, and I'm going to see what branch I'm on. So right now I'm on the master branch. I'm going to go ahead and fetch everything to make sure. This is after you've made a repo in GitHub. We should probably cover that first, shouldn't we? So the first thing you're going to do is when you're in GitHub, you're going to make a new repo. So click on repositories, click on new, and go to, and we'll just name this one video test, or video tut. Isn't that like the, the thing everyone does? We'll go ahead and keep it public. Create the repository. So now I know it's there, and I can simply say, okay, well, here we go. So now I'm going to go to GitHub Desktop. I'm going to click File, Clone Repository, and I'm going to look for Video Tutorial, Clone It. So right now, I have this. To you, that may not mean anything. So if I right-click it, Show in Explorer, it's right here. The Git file is for you to put ignores in, so it ignores certain file types. So like, let's go ahead and say that you have credentials in a uh, properties file. You can set 
the get ignore to ignore properties. There's more information online if you can Google it. I'm not going to tell you how to do every one of them. Essentially, you just put a uh, hashtag, wildcard, a period, and then the file type, and that's pretty much it. It ignores it. So that's that. So we now know that's there. So now if I right click it again and say open an atom, here is my uh, file structure. So let's go ahead and open a new file up. And we will call this one tutorial.txt. So now it's a text editor, or it's a text file, I'm sorry. So we can just edit this. Hi, my name is Moki. Well, that's it. Control S, or if you guys don't like using keyboard shortcuts, just save it. Um, once you're there, you go to the GitHub desktop, and you'll see that now it says, Hi, my name is Moki. Easy, right? So let's go ahead and say initial hello. Description says, I said hi. Commit to master. Now you click publish this branch. Once it's done publishing, you can go to your history and see initial hello. I said hello or hi. I said hi right here. Um, and then that's pretty much it. You go to your GitHub and we'll just go ahead and refresh this. And now here's my file. Now, let's go ahead and say that I, I come in here and let's say that I want to go ahead and make another, let's close this out because I'm getting confused, lost in my own stuff. Let's go ahead and say that I want to go ahead and make a new, well, that's not it. That's definitely not it. That's it. So let's go ahead and say, let's make a new file and let's call this one, I don't know. Uh, let's call it, test.java well now that we know that's a java file so we now know that this is my java file it's a java file it's there control s to save it again go to github desktop go to changes we see that it's now there so first java file don't know why, because I don't really know why I'm doing this. Uh, commit to master, and now you'll see it says push origin. So now I can push it. Really, really, really simple. Go back to your um, repo on GitHub, and you'll see that test Java is now there. Now, let's go ahead and say that you've had an issue. Let's say that your code is completely jacked up. You don't like it. It you broke something, you're, you're panicking, you don't know what's going on, you've got 90 lines of code that duplicated itself, You somebody made a push to your GitHub that ruined everything, you, you just don't want it there. If you just simply right-click it, revert it, um, and fetch it to make sure it's there, push it. Once you push the change, go back to here, check your commits out again, and you'll see revert Java file. It says that it's taken it out. So now, if you go back to the file structure, you'll see that that file is gone. And that is the most simplistic explanation of using GitHub and a text editor for coding. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, in terms of packages, though, you may want to use some other ones that I should have brought up. There are a hundred different packages out there. If you are wanting to code in SQF, in terms of packages for SQF, there's not a whole lot. However, I am using one that I do enjoy a lot. Um, let me go to my packages real quick. Packages. I use dupu dupu duba ba dupa pira ba ba. Where is it at? Oh, language, Arma, Atom. Pretty simple. That's it. That's all I use for Arma. I don't really need anything else. You can use download linters. Um, there's a lot of other packages you can use. So, like I said, highly recommend Astack 
is one right here, a stack. Then I recommend using Auto Update Plus, which keeps all of your packages up to date. File icons, highlight selected, language Arma Atom if you're using Arma. If you're using MySQL in terms of connecting Arma to databases, use my SQL MySQL. Um, linters, which whatever. Um, minimap is a definite. Pigments shows you colors on your code, which is really nice. Um, I think I may have something stringable. Here it is. So with colors, you just see that my colors are here. So this is white, this is white, this is white, this is red, this is green, this is orange. So you can identify your colors immediately. Um, that's pretty much all I have. If you have any other questions, or any questions at all in general, um, leave a comment, let me know, ask me in Discord, send me a forum, po forum message, write a forum post. Whatever the case is, I don't really care how you contact me. Just don't call me if you have my number. If you do have my number, you should call me, though, because I like to party. Not really. Anyways, that's all I have. Any more questions? Yes, just ask. That's all I got to do. Later.